Okay, continuing on with the series of exam techniques for bio paper two, section B. In this video, I'm essentially gonna show you how to kind of figure out how much you need to write in an answer. So what level of depth are you aiming for uh, in order to not only maximize your marks, but not also write too much so that you know you waste uh, waste time writing more than you need to. So for um, to figure out how you do this, you basically need to take two factors into consideration, the command term and the level of marks allocated to the question. Uh, for command terms, there's a video by Stephanie Castle who does a phenomenal job at explaining everything. Uh, I think she brings you through every command term and gives you an example, so I recommend you check that out. I'm more interested in looking at this part here, marks, for this video, because I think it's really interesting how the same question can have different levels of marks, and that means you technically need to have a different answer altogether. So how do you kind of figure this out? So. I think it'll be really helpful if you could take an example from past IB questions, and that's what I've done here. So if you look at these two examples, uh, essentially they're the same thing, right? They're the same question, but with different marks given to them. So really, even though both questions come uh, from the same information in your textbook, from the same body of knowledge, your answers to both of them should be different in the level of detail, right? So you have to figure out which and which parts of the information from your textbook you should include and which you should exclude. Well, why don't we figure it out, and I already have a small base of answers already written out because this isn't a video on explaining how food chains work. It's just a video to kind of illustrate the point. So over here, you see I've written five points. Over here, I've written five points, two extra just for a safety net in case my first three don't work out. Uh, and these are the main points of the whole topic of food chains. If I had to summarize the topic of food chains in five sentences, these are the sentences I'd pick. And it's the same in all topics. What are the main points, for example? What are the main points of monitoring blood glucose if, of that whole topic in chapter six? Uh, it'd be when, you know, really simply, it'd be when glucose is too high, insulin converts glucose to glycogen. And when it's too low, glucagon converts glycogen to glucose, right? Really simple. And that'd be perfect for a four mark question. But let's say that question came out for nine marks. Okay, then you have to add more detail. So, and that's kind of what we're trying to illustrate over here. Uh, we have those five main points of energy transfer in food chains, and that's enough for three marks. And now I just need to add like three more points of detail to my answer, and that's it. So why don't we kind of figure out which points we can elaborate on. So the first one, sun is initial source of energy. That's pretty self-explanatory. I don't know what else I can add. Uh, Two, we could go into the chemical reactions of photosynthesis, but that's not really uh, what the question is calling for. So I'm not I'm not going to elaborate too much on that. Okay, number three, energy flows through food chain by consumption. Hmm. Okay, I remember the question calls for trophic levels over here, right? It's talking about trophic levels. I think that's a good time to bring that in. So I'm gonna really simply say that energy travels to the trophic levels from the producer to the first consumer to the second consumer. So I've added just a little bit of detail, not so much, but just a little bit of extra information that I'm building on from my, you know, from my first three points, from the first set of answers that I'm giving for my three points. Okay, and then we go to the next one, four, not efficient, energy is inefficient and only 10% passes through each level. Okay, maybe I, I can build on that just a little bit more, if I, I'm sure I can elaborate. So why don't I say a few examples of that? For example, the fact that indigestible material such as hair uh, isn't transferred, isn't consumed, so therefore energy is lost. And also, what about that other thing that because every organism, you know, uses and use, needs to undergo cellular respiration to release energy, and that produces heat, which that heat energy is lost. Uh, that's another point. So I've got from my first five points for the three marks, I've just added three more points for the six marks. And it's really just that I just added those 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 three more points of detail. So that's kind of the concept of what we're trying to do. When you know when a nine mark question comes, you don't have to freak out. Rather, you just need to kind of layer on top of the main points you already know, just some points of detail to add to your answer. And if you have a question that only requires three marks, but you can write ten marks on it, right? You know you, you know you've studied for that topic, it's time for it's your time to shine, time to show the IB examiner, you know, I, I know everything there is to know about this topic. No, in, even if you're writing more just to be safe, just strip away the excess detail and focus on the main point. So it goes both ways. And it's with this adding and subtracting of detail that you can figure out what you need to include in your answer based on the amount uh, of marks that your question has. So 
hopefully that helped. Remember, it's just this concept of layering detail on top of each other. And and if you need any help, let me know in the comments. I'll be I'll try my best to answer. All right, have fun.